Hello there, welcome to another episode of World of Tanks with Ngani Titan, and we're here on Mines in the Tiger 1. It is one of my last games in the Tiger 1, and I just thought I'd um, say for farewell for the time being to the Tiger 1. I will definitely come back to this tank. I'm not selling it, it is still in my garage, and but I don't have a crew in it at the moment. But I would be curious at some point in the future when I have a good German crew, as in 7 or 8 skills heavy tank appropriate put in the Tiger 1 and go back into the game probably try and 2 market um, I could try for an ace tanker but I have my doubts I know there are people out there there's at least one person that kind of specializes in playing Tiger 1's and has thousands of games possibly over 10,000 games or more I don't know how many games but a lot of games in the Tiger 1 and I think it would be very challenging to 3 market or to ace a tank when people like that are playing them. I remember one stage playing, I think it was a T67 at the time when there was a bunch of people who had 4 or 5,000 games in the T67 and they were very active playing them at the time and um, you couldn't get a sniff of an ace tanker with them um, while they were at it. At least I couldn't anyway. Now I backed up the T3485 because I knew he had friends and I didn't want to too many tanks shooting at me at once. So as by backing up I was uh, the friends were you know gonna be more cautious about coming out, otherwise they'd have been there with him or they were in slower tanks. Like the Slapjack, which is as far as I know a combination of the IS chassis and a T29 turret. So don't go shooting in the front of the turret. As you can tell, it's a pretty formidable machine. It's left me with very little hit points. Um, the T-34-85 took a few, but the bulk of it was taken by the... Um now, this French tank is not leaving me a lot of room. It looks like an ARL-44 chassis, but I don't know if it's an ARL-44 turret. So I'm not sure what it is. So I'm going to go around this side of the KV-1 and... If I had a few more hit points, I wouldn't be so worried. But with the, you know, not a great chance of penetrating. But any shot will. He's perfectly capable of doing 80 points of damage or 82 points of damage if he did penetrate. We have won the corner, however, and there's three of them there, and there's no sign of an enemy tank. So I thought, okay, the center looks a lot more threatened than um, than this side. And I'm not going to add a lot of additional firepower coming down across that open ground towards the cab circle. So I might get more opportunities supporting the tanks that are here. Now, things are looking pretty grim at the moment. There's a medium after coming in. And there's a medium and a heavy here. However, I'm going to get an opportunity to do a nice piece of damage to that uh, T-29. He's after taking out the tank destroyer, but... I probably back up, I was waiting for 6 cents to go away, but I probably backed up too far and I would have been better off being a bit closer and I could have been more used to the uh, to the light tank. But he's managed to take out the T29, It's a pretty decent gun on that light tank, so there's a T3488, which is essentially a German captured uh, T34 with an 88 gun, so I thought he was going to come around the rock and... Uh, I was pretty certain at one stage he was going to come around the rock, or at least appear in the gap between the two of them. But he seems to be too smart to do something uh, fairly obvious like that. And the um, He's, I don't know what exactly he's doing, but he's definitely making a move of some sort. So I come here and he was trying to side script the corner, so I put a shot through the side of them. And that pretty much takes care of the situation in the centre in front of me. However, there's a light tank, or a tank destroyer flanking my position. Um, so I managed to take out the Hellcat, but then I sort of suffered from a bit of rush of blood to the head when I realised that I have five tanks killed. Ooh. And I know there's a tank in the cap circle now. That's what happens. Um, I should have been more sp circumspect, as you can imagine, and the AMX ELC will be able to pull up to this bush. And actually, um, sight in on that E25 without the E25 being aware that he's there because he's a light tank and he can do stuff like that. 
Whereas I was in a heavy tank and I can't really expect to get away with stuff like that. We are pretty much mopping up though. We've uh, one tank left. This, the E25 is now the only tank left and we're capping. And we have, well we've one tank in the cap circle at the moment. Now we have still one tank, two tanks in the cap circle. Um, so the E25 is not going to win by capping. He had five kills as well. He did pretty well for himself. Um, not the easiest map to get five kills on an E25. So the Amex ELC is taking the low road, and the Stuart Meal is taking the high road. And the um, E25 is vacating the premises, he's getting out of the cap circle, he knows that he has no chance. He has actually eliminated the Amex ELC, but he made the mistake of stopping in front of the Stuart Meal. Uh, big mistake. If you drove around the Stuart Meal, the Stuart Meal would probably win. They turn reasonably quickly, but they won't turn as quickly as in. A uh, E25 go around them. So two and a half thousand points damage. Didn't get any assisted. Thirteen or twelve penetrations. Um, five kills. Came to number one by experience. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you have not already done so, please subscribe to the channel. I will catch you all again soon. Bye for now.